Hi everyone, it's Diane and I'm back at work making some more ephemera with the book pages from these textbooks that I am making journals with. Um, so I showed you some of the things that I did yesterday. I've got glue on me because I've been at it for, I don't know, probably close to an hour so far today, but I wanted to um, get some things done before I turn the camera on. So this is a collage piece that I did from one of the textbook pages from the teacher's edition. Um, and I want to do some more of these today. Um, this you saw me cut out and glue to the craft card stock as a tuck spot. And we made these stacked pockets yesterday. And this was an idea from Pam at the Paper Outpost. And I had linked her channel to yesterday's video. And I will link it to this one too because I watched her. She has a lot of um, pages of videos on things to do with book pages. So I watched a couple more of her videos today, and I want to do some of her, some more of her ideas today. Um, but I also just cut out some really fun images. So this was really quick and easy. I just cut out. There were so many wonderful images in these textbooks, mostly the science book. So, I, isn't that a great image? all those bell jars or whatever they are. And I backed this one with uh, the leftover, a leftover scrap from the do-it-yourself pattern and instruction sheet that I used as a page. This was a graph and it, there were two graphs of the same size so I just backed them together and you can journal on both sides. That's another sheet, another scrap from that instruction sheet. I love this microscope drawing or that's not a microscope. I don't know what it is. I should have read it. Um, coffee dyed paper there. This was a, a section about how things heat. So there's a woman ironing. I just love the colors of this one. Talking about temperatures. And these are materials checklists. I think these must be for the teacher's edition. I'm not sure. Maybe it was in the student's book, but uh, again, I back two together and there's room for journaling. This one, I cut it a little bigger. I guess it was bigger. and put it on coffee dyed paper. And I had mentioned that this illustration would make an excellent little booklet, so I made it into a booklet. I, Because it's wider and I don't have a lot of coffee dyed strips of scraps of that width, and I didn't want to use you know, like a whole page of coffee dyed paper and cut that up. I just rubbed um, glue stick all over the back of this and then laid a strip down and then another strip and pressed them down and then cut around it. And I glue or sewed this rickrack, it's very colorful rickrack to it, and then used some graph paper which has lined paper on the other side. And I used four pieces cut to size and I mean it's two pieces of paper but it ended up with four strips to fold in half and to sew into the book and then I, I'm making three books so I wanted to make sure I had a booklet for each journal so then I took this one and did the same thing and this one Another thing I did, and this was from watching Pam's video, and I think she just put this video up today. Um, today is actually, um, what is today? Thursday, October 3rd, but you will see this on Friday. So she took buttons, just plain boring buttons, and used a one inch punch and punched um, text out from book pages and then used Mod Podge to adhere them to buttons and I didn't demonstrate that because she just did that on her channel so you can watch that and how it's very easy rub some Mod Podge on the button and then lay the circle on it and put a seal of Mod Podge on it but press down into the curved parts of the button if applicable that one had a little I think it's a scale on the other side. I had punched out text, but when I went to put it on there, I saw that, so I just put that on there. This one 
um, it doesn't leave a rim around it. I think I like them better with the rim, but that's fine. And it'll look more like a button. Once the Mod Podge dries, I'll take a little needle and poke holes through the paper and then put some thread in them. But those are fun, and I made sure I punched out. This was like a list of science stuff. Species, spore, stamen, static electricity, telescope, television, temperature, thermometer. So it must have been uh, just a list. I saw that list in, in the book and just punched. So that was another little project. So I can use these to embellish pages. Thanks for that great idea, Pam. And then the other video that I saw of hers today was making envelopes out of book pages. Now we've all done that. We've all probably made envelopes out of book pages. But Pam's technique made it really, really easy. Or it can be an envelope or a pocket. You can leave, you don't have to bend that down. You can just leave it like that and then glue it onto the page and have a tag stuck in there. So, I started some. I took the pages. I have one from, this is from that long book, the sixth grade science book. This is from the uh, math book. What's the name of that? Ge Arithmetic and Geometry. And then this one is from the book about writing. So I have the three different textbooks here. I have these two already prepped part way, so I'm going to take this one. I want to use this side that's more plain text. This is going to be a skinny. You could do it this way if you wanted a wider envelope. But it's more like a coin envelope. And just overlap that slightly. That's a rough edge, so I'm going to put that on the inside. You don't have to. If you want the rough edge showing, go for it. it seems dark in here today. I'm not going to go all the way up to the top and bottom with the glue because I want to trim the white margin off. So that's what I've done with these two. That's all I've done. So now I'm going to take my scissors and trim off, I'll start with the ones that are already dry, trim off the white. Okay, then, this is the widest one. It's from that landscape shape book. So now, this is the seam. Not that it matters for this part. I'm going to just um, bend it over. I'm not going to crease it here. I'm just bending it. And I'm going to try my deckled scissors. She used decorative scissors. You can use straight scissors. I used straight scissors for that one that I did. I thought I did two. Maybe I only did one. Hmm. Oh, I did. I did do two. And I use straight scissors, but I want to try my deckle edge scissors. So holding those two edges even, I'm just going to cut an angle. And because it's a deckle edge, I'm going to do the top. I didn't with the straight scissors because you don't need to. And then, again, bending it, you're going to do a slight angle at the bottom. So it looks like that. And then you take it and, again, just 
hold it loosely you're not creasing it here this is where the seam is and I'm gonna take my straight scissors and I'm gonna cut here she called it a deep cut you could even just continue that same angle but I'm not going to be quite that extreme I'm just going to make a good cut right there and then down here instead of following this way we're going to angle it the other way and just do a slight just a slight angled cut to make it easier to fold the flap up and I didn't do that right did I no I did not do that right because it has to go all the way to that point I shouldn't have used my um, deckle edge for that, but it doesn't really matter because I don't think it's going to show. There. It has to go from that point to, to the middle. Okay, so now we have this. And now you can see where it's going, can't you? So I'm going to fold this up and glue it. And I can fold this down as a flap, an envelope flap or I can leave it and then just glue it into a book and put a tag in there. So I think I'll leave it until I decide where I'm going to put it in the book. If I want to use it as a movable pocket, I actually um, angled that down too far so I'm going to trim that straight. Um, I could use it as a movable pocket that I just paper clip to the side of a page. So I, if you wanted to fold this down and use it as a flap, you wouldn't want to make your cut so deep. Probably. Let's do that again with this. This is the algebra, arithmetic and algebra. I can't ever remember which what math this is. Not that it matters. I just want to say it right. I don't know what I did with the book cover. Arithmetic and geometry. Okay. So again, I'm going to just this is the this is in the back. The seam is in the back. I'm just going to fold that over and I'm just going to use a straight edge. just makes it so fast and simple. So I'm going to angle that up a little more. But you cut it at an angle instead of straight across so that you have a way to get your card in and out, your tag. I'm going to try folding this down and see where we're at. nicely but I didn't cut the bottom part yet to do. I'm not sure. I don't remember this part now. I think, okay, I think, yeah, I did that wrong. Angle it up this way. I angled it the wrong way. And I said in the other video not to angle it that way, <laughs> or in the other envelope. Okay, so you follow what I did wrong, and then don't do that. So this part is going to be angled up a little bit just to make it an, a smoother fold. Got one more to do and then I want to decorate them. Right 
this time. I'm going to angle it up a little bit, not much. See how fast you can make envelopes? Now this is from the writing book and I thought the paper was a little flimsy so I glued two pages together and that makes it quite sturdy. But this is the same book and I didn't do that and I think it's fine. Now I have all these envelopes I can decorate. By the way, these are more images that I cut out of the science book. Oh, this was one I wanted to make into a book. But I did that solar system one instead. So these are some more images. This is uh, atoms in a tungsten crystal. I thought it looked pretty. Triangles. I love that. This it, sixth grade science book is just so full of fun, fun images. Bunsen burner. And I love this. I'm, I'm hoping to use this in a collage. Maybe I'll put it on one of these. So I'm going to um, back those with coffee dyed paper too and use them for journaling cards. Okay. Where are we here? Let's take the wide one because maybe I can use this on here and I think I'm going to want to glue this one down to a page I just love that light bulb so I brought up my pieces that I've been organizing see if I can use any of these I'm giving you a sneak peek of my organization for ephemera. I'm still working on it. It's going to be a process, I can tell. It's just a printable ticket. Bus ticket type of thing. These are all tickets. Printable tickets. Miniature tags. Where'd that come from? Almost like something was upside down. Hmm, nope, they just fell right out of there. I think they came out of two different pockets. All right, put them out of the way. Mm, what's this? I have flowers in this one. have my vintage magazine advertisements on my table here and some words. Mulberry paper here. I wonder if my tear ruler would work good on mulberry paper. Beautiful. You have 
to hold it down firmly when you're when you're just when you just have a little piece underneath it because it's easy to pull it out or shift it like that. So this blue part here can be part of the collage also. Got an extra circle. Don't like that. I'm just going to get my box of stamps. Oops. Sorry. Copernicus. Perfect. Right on top of the box. Okay, let's just glue it down. We'll start with the black piece. I'm just using Elmer's Craft Bond Extra Strength. It seems to work fine. I've used that for quite a long time. And then the light bulb. I'm going to trim some of that white off of the from around the picture. Um, Pam did some embellishing on hers too, but not like this. She put a piece of trim down here on some of them and added a couple pieces. So you can just make it your own. I just liked the technique that she used for cutting it because it was quick and easy. But her, uh, her embellishments were nice too. Her, her envelopes look very pretty. And on her video she shows... Um, an assortment that she's made or has started anyway. I'm going to go back to her channel and watch her journal videos because she makes journals. I clicked on her channel because she commented on my video and Something she said, I don't remember, just, you know, part of her comment made me think, oh, I wonder if she has a channel. So I clicked on her, and it took me to her channel. So some of you who watch my videos and comment may have a channel, and I don't know it. You can let me know that you have a channel. I would go over and subscribe to you. And I'm hoping that you will go subscribe to Pam. I don't know her last name. So there's that one, and I can make a nice big journaling card to stick in there. If I wanted to make it look more vintage, I could ink around the edges. But like I said yesterday, this isn't a journal that I'm going to be doing a lot of distressing so I don't need to. Now this has a big plain white side here so I need to do something to decorate that.
We'll use that. This one I folded. I might want to do both sides, but for now I think we'll just do one side. Get it right. This one doesn't want to tear. Just wants to pull out. Hey, I got my deco scissors right here. I know if I wet it that I could tear it, but I don't have the patience for that today. This has some gold letters on it, so I'm just going to put that on there. Right there it says tender. tender. It's kind of covered up anyway. I'll just leave it there for decoration. Because you can see the mulberry paper and then a little hints of gold. This doesn't go with the science book theme, but Actually, the, these journals don't have a theme. I just am using a science book cover and might as well use the pages out of it. There's a little stamp that I think looks nice with it. I like it down here. Okay, let's glue this. I don't think I'm gonna have time to do the collages that I wanted to do on the book pages. One of these days I have to actually start putting the pages, you know, like decorating the pages and putting the journal together. <laughs> Once I get the ephemera made though, I already have the pages cut. Um, once I get all this ephemera done, then the pages will go together pretty quickly. I want to probably make the covers before I do the pages. I'll make them with a two and a half inch spine because that's what the other books ended up being. Usually I um, get all my pages done and filled before I make my cover because I want to know how big I need the spine. But the other ones, like I said, ended up at two and a half inches. So I'll just make these two and a half inches. I'm using my um, scotch white glue for this because this is a heavier piece. I just want to make sure it's going to stick. I should probably put something up there too. Oh, 
Put up some washi tape. My washi tape sits on a, a shelf over my desk right off to my right so I can easily reach up there and get it but I just don't think of it <laughs> all the time I don't use my washi tape like I should once that glue dries I'll trim that off so I have two envelopes done and three more to do. These won't all go in these journals, but I'll have a couple for uh, my stash. But I want to set them aside so that I can just take a little bit of time and do some collaging on these cards that I had cut from the teacher's part of the teacher's edition textbook. Because I love this house, these houses, and I want to use them. So I thought that because there's so much space on these that I could collage on this side and this side could be written on. So I want to use a lot of elements on the page so that it makes it stiffer because I'm not backing it with anything. So let's get back into the washi tape. Let's just put that right across the top. Those houses came from one of the Somerset magazines, Somerset Studio. I don't know which one. I just have a bunch of stuff that I've cut out of them because I love them. Okay, now what am I going to use here? Look at my paper scraps. I have a little bin of paper scraps um, on the floor right next to me. So this is a scrapbook paper that has flowers and script and music, so I think it's really pretty. I'm just going to cover that whole thing with it. stop saying I'm sorry is every time I jiggle the camera just know that I'm sorry okay I'm going to use this oval shape to kind of offset the square shapes of the houses but I don't like that color it blends in too much thought I needed a little one. I need one more little thing on there. Okay. 
These are some scallop circles that I punched out of Vintage Magazine flowers. I like that. One more thing. I'm going to add a little bit of washi tape down in this corner. Let's try this green because there's green here and green there. washi tape on three things, well, two things, but I used three different washi tapes. See which one is behind everything. So that will be the label. smaller glue stick I can use. Sometimes that big one is overkill. So I told you that I was watching that PBS Ken Burns documentary about country music, which I've, I've been binging because I came in late on it, but I was able to get all of the episodes DVR'd and there are eight episodes and they're two hours each. It's a lot of TV. But um, my cable, my satellite is going to go away because I canceled it. And I can't remember what day. Like the 10th or somewhere between the 10th and 13th or something like that. I want to make sure I get them watched before my cable or satellite is done. So anyway, I've been binge watching that and I'm on the seventh episode, I think. So once I get this one watched, then I'll only have one to go. So I'll get it. I'll make it in time. But before that, I was kind of, every time I turned on the TV, I was watching um, the mid, uh, Call the Midwife on Netflix, which I'll still have Netflix once I get rid of the satellite. So that's why I'm making the country music one more important right now. So anyway... I need to get back to watching Call the Midwife because where I left off was just so tragic. It broke my heart. It just broke my heart. And I need to get back to it so, it'll, so I can get to a happier place in it. I have to watch the country music first. <laughs> I'm silly, I know. So there's a collage on one of these papers and it's sturdier because I glued a bunch of stuff to it. And I've got these all cut. I probably won't do them all. And I've got three more envelopes to collage. So I've still got some more ephemera work to do. Plus I have these to back. And probably all of these won't get used in these books, but I'll have them for stash. And maybe send some extras with the journals for whoever purchases them. And then I have to just poke a needle or a pin through the holes. Let's try that. See if it makes it look more buttony. And then I'll put some thread in there. Isn't that cute? So I have these to finish up. But now it is time for me to go do some housework. I try to try to stick, put myself on a schedule so I actually get some housework done and actually take time to cook meals and stuff. So yesterday I did really good with that. I wrote down between this time and this time I'm going to do this. That's my daughter texting me. <laughs> you know, and I stuck with it pretty good yesterday, but you can't always. You get interrupted with things. 
and you know people are more important than your to-do list so okay so I'm having fun making all this ephemera and I will be back showing you some more work being done on these journals thanks for watching bye bye